Hey, welcome back. Um, I got a FMS FCX10 on the bench today. Uh, FMS uh, gave me the privilege to run the pre-production version of this back in October uh, at the Nurses Show, and um, I finally got one in hand. Um, big shout out to them. Thanks a lot. Uh, but one thing, one of my comments was uh, the ability to do rear wheel drive, four wheel drive, uh, selectable, um, instead of the dig. I really, I'm not, I'd rather have rear wheel drive than front drive only and dig. So a couple of people have asked, you know, uh, how to do that. The instructions, uh, in the manual, uh, basically just say that it can be done, but there's no instructions on how to do it. It just says to move the shift lever. So I'm gonna dig into that and see if I can get that accomplished uh, and give a little bit of information on how to do it. So right now on the radio, uh, this switch uh, controls that function. Uh, it's three position, so you have four wheel drive in the center, you have rear wheel or dig if you flip it back toward the palm of your hand. And if you go all the way forward, you have front drive only and rear free wheel. So I'm going to try and get that into a rear wheel drive, uh, like a, like a, a realistic truck, um, and then have the locker unlock functionality in the rear end and give a little bit better trail driving experience so i'm going to get the transmission pulled out of that out of this and uh, we'll start digging into the transmission all right here we go so uh the transmission is out uh, basically you just unplug the two servos uh, these are the transmission servo placements over on this side um, unplugged and removed them just for ease of maintenance and getting the rods out and stuff. Um, unplugged the servos. I marked the case uh, three dots for uh, the three position that I'm working on and the two dot for the two position. So it kind of made sense. Um, let get this out of the way. And then we have the um, the servos. This is the high low and this is the three position. Um, you can kind of see how I have these laid out on the bench with all the parts and what all goes with them. Uh, down to the conical washers, I always put a conical washer underneath the nut so it, I know which way it faces when I go to put it back together because this one might be a bit. And then we get the transmission. So transmission is out and um, this is the three position, this is the two position for the high-low. So we're going to focus in, I believe it's going to be this shift servo fork back here. Um, I'll pull the various screws out of this and uh, see where we're at. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, let's get started on this bad boy. Let's split this case open. At least they're all the same size, so that makes putting it back together a little bit easier. Let's see. This is probably the holding in the dig, so we're going to wait to pull that one until we split this thing open. I think I got all the screws. Let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything. We got one back here. Mm. 
let's just go ahead and take them out. Yeah, that's definitely threaded into metal, not plastic. So I'll take that one out. There we go. So that one definitely has to come out to split the case. Let's try and do this gently. Definitely in the shaft. Alright, so let's put this one off to the side. That's our front output. We have a clutch here. And this one. So there's our gear assemblies. This is our main input shaft. So that is, this is our high-low clutch. There's a bearing on there. So I think this is where we want to get into, is where it shifts the rear. So we have our clutch in here. So when they say we're going to you just need to flip some gears around. It's not very descriptive. Um, how, do I, how do I say that? Not helpful. <laughs> so it looks like we do need to pull this one out. These screws are holding these shafts in. that shaft in. That shaft. And here's our cluster. And there's our rear output. So when this is engaged, slide that back in there for a second. Almost had it. There it is. All right. So rear output engages. So that is the lock position. This is going to take a moment to figure out what they got going on in here. So, I wonder if this collet is locked on. engineer. I'll give you that. <clears throat> in here.
so that's free. So halfway is four wheel drive. So if I want that to drive all the time. This would have to get flipped. And that would keep it from locking. Because we don't want anything to lock. Can't be like that. <clears throat> Almost looks like there should be a pin. I think you could pin that on there. And that would give you the full time. See if a pin fits in there. Too big.
just thinking a little bit. No, I was thinking that's meant to be pinned into that to turn the shaft the whole time. But what would disengage this? Okay, that makes sense. So this is the midpoint. This is the output. So as the collar goes up, all the way up, would be just this output. Okay. So I think I know what's going on. So this needs a pin in it. And that gear definitely needs to be flipped over to prevent it from locking. So I think I did this correct. I just think I need to pin this. So let me try and find a pin for that. It may have included it, I just haven't looked. Okay, I think I got this figured out now. So, yes, you do need this pin, uh, the 3x2, or 10x2 that I originally found. It is, it does show it in the manual. Um, but it doesn't give it a part number. So if you look here in the part manual, it's showing this pin. Um, I'm assuming that that's what that pin is, but I'm not for, for certain because that manual doesn't give part numbers for all the individual pieces. But anywho, so taking this off and then taking off, this is the front drive gear. Um, so we you need to pull that forward and push this pin out. So you're not going to need that pin. The collar is actually going to slide over top of that and lock it. So with that one in, kind of line up the gears, makes it a little easier to put the box back together. We'll put this pin, we'll pin this gear to the shaft because we need that gear just only spin with the shaft and that'll give us our rear wheel drive so we'll get that pin back in kind of get the shaft so I so it doesn't just keep falling out and we put our front out drive back in the box as you can see that now spins freely and then the clutch or the sprag unit whatever you want to call it that's on the inside of this box will engage those gears. So getting this back together again is a little bit of an art form to try and get all them lined up so that they slide easily together to reassemble everything. So I'm going to give it a shot and see if I can get it stabbed back in here, get everything to line up. Oh, we're so close. I'm give it a little spin. Get these gears to jump together here, hopefully. And again, this is just a... There it is. Alright, so we got that together. Then, the easiest way to keep it together until you get all the screws in is put the sha shaft screw back in. And... Once we get that tight, the gearbox can't come apart at that point um, because it's being held. These screws go into that solid shaft on both sides, so it holds it together. So what we're looking at is, so we have, if we're turning the input, the counter, the spur gear, and we're going along, so that's rear wheel drive. You can see the front output is not moving. And then if we would engage this shaft, it should turn that front output. As you can see, it is turning the front output. Alright, so just recapping this. So 
our goal was to get from a front wheel drive, four wheel drive dig transmission setup to a front wheel drive, four wheel drive, rear wheel drive setup. And I believe we've accomplished that. So we removed that pin and we inserted a new pin uh, in that um, in that cluster pack. So for functionality, we're just going to do a functions check here. Um, should be able to see the front out drive and the rear out drive. And this is our shifter that's controlling it. So right now we have what appears to be rear wheel drive. And then with this shifter in its midpoint, I'll get it to lock in. Now we can see we have, yeah, put a little pressure on it. We have four wheel drive. And if we continue to go in, it takes a bit of a push here to get things lined up with a servo on here. It'll probably be easier. Um, but yeah, we're, we're still locked in. And we just had it. There it is. Um, so now we have um, front drive. So we do have front drive, there's no, this is spinning, but there, as soon as I put pressure on it, it stops spinning. So there's our front drive, and then get it into, it's so much easier if I had three hands. <laughs> um, get this one to spin, pop out, pop out for me, come on, you can do it. Anyway, there it is. Um, now we have our rear drive and our midpoint is four wheel drive. So it's working. The high low still works just fine. It actually has a neutral in it. Um, if you really wanted a neutral, you could put it in there. I don't know why you would want that, but it's there. It's there for the asking if you program that servo. Um, but yeah, there's our high speed as well. So we're good. I'm going to put the truck back together and we'll do a functions test with electronics. Alrighty, so we got truck back together again. Um, got a two cell in there, just plenty for trail riding in my opinion. Um, big 4200 high voltage pack, plenty for this truck. So, what do we got? So, controller, uh, channel six, is in the center position of the three position switch and we have four wheel drive so the the shift servo needs a little bit of adjustment yet um, just to be able to get it out but with switch six in the rear position you have rear wheel drive which makes sense to me and then if you move it all the way to the forward you have front wheel drive and you have rear freewheel. So you can kind of get a dig, um, but it's not gonna lock the rear axle, but with front front only steering, with open diff rear, you're still gonna turn pretty tight, um, just without the dig. Um, and then of course, going back to four wheel drive. So it's working, um, I got no issues. I think I'm going to enjoy the truck in this, in this format um, and it was really pretty easy to do if I can find a 2 mil by 10 mil pin part number somewhere on Amazon I'll put it in the description below um, but not a priority for me today but I'll get there eventually if somebody has it uh, post up a part number uh, for that particular pin um, and then taking the, the pin out of the out of the stock piece that pin that you're taking out of that gear for the front drive does not fit in the in the space that you need to put it in it's a little too long uh, and i'm afraid it'll catch up on the dog gears of that uh, shift mechanism so there you go um convert your fcx 10 into a proper rear, rear wheel drive four wheel drive with the optional front drive uh, instead of doing the factory installed dig and that's what we got if you enjoyed the video um, hit the like button subscribe 
uh, really appreciate if you subscribe. I'm getting near 1,000. Um, if I go over 1,000 on this, um, you know, if it's this video that gets me over 1,000 subs, I'll probably give this truck away. It might be at Beat the Creek in two weeks. So uh, hit the subscribe, hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.